Welcome back. Let's take a look at sports now. Cricket South Africa has announced their new coaches for the national men's team. Conrad Shukri will coach the Proteus Test team and Rob Walters takes charge of the national white ball teams. The Proteus have been through a rocky period of late, culminating in a disastrous test tour of Australia, where they were humiliated in the first two tests before earning a draw in the weather-affected final test. Let's uh, discuss these new appointments and the way forward. Uh, we're joined by former fast bowler Hugh Page, uh, who was the national selector in the early 2000s. A very good day to you, Hugh, and thanks for making the time. Oh, thank you. Thank you for having me on, the, on your show. So the Proteus uh, have just come off a humiliating test series defeat against Australia. In your opinion, what will it require to turn around the national team's performance? Look, you know, it's, it's, it's very easy to shout from, from outside the, the organisation and make all the, the, the wrong noises. Um, but I do feel that cricket uh, has lost its uh, momentum over the last uh, while. And a lot of people who are good cricket people who are able to offer the game a, a hell of a lot have either been forced out of cricket or have moved on just out of frustration. I think uh, you see cricket in the news every day for the wrong reasons and you know my concern is that there are not enough people that have cricketing backgrounds uh, in the administration any longer it's, it seems to be that uh, certain people are overlooked for whatever reason and uh, a lot of the good cricket people are so frustrated with what's going on they're no longer prepared to get involved or stay involved not too optimistic there. So both Conrad Shukri and Rob Walters have enjoyed success at franchise level, but the international game is very different, not so. Very much so. You know, I, you know, I know both guys and um, I haven't worked with them. So in fairness, you know, I can't really comment about uh, the ability, but certainly, you know, they've been in the game a long while and they have a very good understanding of, uh, of first class cricket. Uh, neither, from what I can understand, have been involved for long periods at, at an international level. Uh, so if there is a concern, that could well be it. But I am feeling that at least we started to move in the right direction. Um, we had you know, Graham Smith running South African cricket, uh, or running, he was director of you know, CSA um, up until about eight months ago. And we had Mark Boucher, who's very, very experienced at international level looking after the test and one-day teams. And, you know, both those guys have had difficult uh, uh, exits from the game. They were under huge pressure for political reasons. And, you know, it, it was a shame to see them lost to the game. But uh, I am pleased to see that, you know, the guys that uh, have replaced them have some sort of cricketing credibility. And having previously been a national selector, what do you think it takes to achieve the right balance in a South African team? Well, I think, you know, there's always the, the issue, well, it's not an issue, but there's always transformation that is, is part of the selection process and, and it's always been considered, but it has to be administered properly. And, you know, I just think that, you know, when you look at the current board, um, I don't see many guys who have a, a cricketing background in that board. I think there were um, 17 board members, of which I know two uh, have strong cricketing links. The rest may have an association with the game, but aren't, um, you know, they haven't really got huge pedigrees. And a lot of them are professionals in their own rights and, and in their own professions and industries or sectors or whatever they may be. And I'm sure they're very capable in their own rights. But I am concerned that uh, when it comes to making cricketing decisions, you know, I'm not sure the right ones have been made. And certainly as far as the public relations side of things is concerned, you know, cricket has, has been in the forefront of faux pas after faux pas. And quite honestly, I think they've lost a huge amount of ground. They've lost uh, all supporters. They've lost a lot of support. And obviously, they've lost the support of uh, sponsors. And without those two, cricket is under pressure. And then, you know, at the end of the day, the selectors that are picking the teams are dealing with uh, players' livelihoods. And you've got to have guys that really have a deep understanding of the game that yeah. are making those kind of calls because it's, it, it, is, it's, it has few, huge financial uh, ramifications. So you, are you happy that we have enough talented players coming through um, in this country that are capable of competing at international level? 
Well, I've, I've been, that's been my biggest gripe, to be honest with you, is that, you know, our, our school, schooling system provides probably the best nursery of young cricketers into, into the big wide world of cricket. And I don't think there are too many countries other than maybe India, India where they're just the sheer numbers can compete with us. But certainly that the India side, I can't think of another school, another country in the world that produces young cricketers like we do. My greatest concern is when they get to the end of school, what happens to them? They, they get lost in the, in the system. Yeah. Well, let's thank you for your time today and a, a lovely conversation. Hugh Page, there's a former fast bowler and a selector as well. And uh, just talking to us about that uh, appointment of uh, coaches yesterday.